So you did the Jags Niners last week, and it's one thing to watch a game or you watch film. It's another thing to watch in person. So let's – Trevor Lawrence is fine. That Niners off a bye was a handful. But I want to talk Brock Purdy. You've now seen him live um, and against a team that's got some players. What do you make of Brock Purdy? System, not system, what do you make of him? Well, I, I think there's a little bit of system for every quarterback. Um, you know, I, I can go back to Troy. You know, in Norv's system, I mean, he loved it. He had confidence in it, and and he played outstanding. When Chan Gailey came in and he was in that system, it didn't play to his strengths. So I think everybody, every quarterback, even Hall of Fame quarterbacks, you know, there's a system component to how they play. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of that for Brock Purdy. But, but I tell you what, Colin, he, he can make some throws. And, yeah. and it's exactly what Kyle Shanahan was talking about. During that three-game losing streak, I really looked more at the defense. I mean, that's what popped out to me on film. They weren't playing to the 49er standard. Dre Greenlaw was hurt. Kind of the same impact that Trent Williams and Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey being nicked up had on the offensive side of the ball. Now, he had some critical interceptions, especially down the stretch in those games that are directly related to the loss. But, you know, the majority of the game, you know, he's playing extremely well. I mean, he's still making those great throws very anticipatory. Um, he's building trust. If you look at the five interceptions that he had during those three games, two were to Brendan Ayuk, uh, who he said he's getting much better with and, and understanding and building that trust. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod, Elijah, uh, the running back, Mitchell. Yeah. Um, and then uh, one more. And it, it was it was people who he's not familiar with. Juwan Jennings was the, was the last one. So he's still got to build that rapport with them. So when you're throwing in a anticipatory style into the middle of the field. If quarterback and wide receiver are not in lockstep, you have the potential for an interception. And, and that's one of the things that Kyle shared with us. He goes, you know, he, he loves the phrase letter rip. He wants that letter rip quarterback. And he referenced a little bit with Kirk cousins of why he's had interceptions through his career. You know, when you play that style, you know, sometimes you're going to have those interceptions and uh, he was fine with, with Brock's style of play, you know, during the course of those three games. And I think he proved everybody coming out, you know, after that by how well he played against Jacksonville. Dallas is almost like a college team where they're just crazy good at home. <laughs> like at home, they play with their hair on fire. There's a different emotional level. And then they go on the road and you're not quite sure what the college team is going to give you. You just don't know half to half. I don't know if it's cultural. I don't, I mean, Dak is virtually as a favorite unbeatable at home. It's weird. The NFL is not like that. You got headsets. You can hear good teams don't go on the road and fold. That's just not the way it works. But Dallas is interesting. We, a couple years on this, Moose. What, what, there's, I can't even – there's not a comp. I always feel like Philadelphia. I get the same team home or away. Maybe a little better at home, same team. Same with Kansas City. I get kind of the same team. What do you make of Dallas, this almost collegiate home team that can throw a stinker out on the road? Is it leadership? Is it culture? What do you make of it? Well, I, I don't – I'm not going to put the Philadelphia game in that category. I, I, I don't know what happened in San Francisco. And that was, one of the, <laughs> that was one of the things that Kyle Shanahan shared with us that got himself into trouble. He said, he goes, I was the most unpleasant 4-0 coach in the history of the NFL because I felt like we weren't playing very well. And then we played Dallas. And everything was great. You know, that's what we expected. So – you know, was that a great San Francisco? Or was that, again, some of that bad Dallas on the road? Since that game, they've kind of started to transition offensively into a different style of play. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how that transmits on road games. I, I think the Philadelphia game, you know, you saw how well Dak played in that game. I mean, it literally came down to a game of inches, right? The, the yeah. spot on the goal line, stepping out of bounds on the two-point play. Um, you know, it's just those those parts of the game – uh, where you say football's a game of inches, that you really get a feel for what that exactly means. So I think that there's been a change in what they're doing in the offensive style of play, and I'm I'm interested to see how that translates on the road. But it was one of the things that that Jimmy Johnson was always big with us. Um, you know, always started off, you got to win your home games, you're going to split on the road. You know, he had this theory, but his whole mantra was having that swagger going on the road. And just go back to the University of Miami. You know, when they traveled, when they came into stadiums at the collegiate level, you know, the, the, the bravado and the swagger that they brought there. You know, he wanted us to have that, whether we were going to the vet, 
going to Candlestick, wherever we were going, you know, we needed to carry that with us. And, and I think it's something that has to be talked about. I think it has to be part of the culture inside the facility. You know, half of your games are, are going to be on the road. And, and if you're a team that really struggles on the road, it's going to put you in a really tough spot come December. So um, I, I said last week, I don't remember Jimmy Johnson's Cowboys having a lot of players only meetings or 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 Bill Walsh's <laughs> Niners. Usually it's a sign of crisis. But um, I, I'm not saying, you know, it would be almost like in my family if there was a kids only meeting, no parents like this, you know, maybe it can help. I don't know. But when I hear it, I get very cynical. I'm like, OK, this this is this, I, I joked earlier. It's like when your boss says, hey, could you stop by my office after work? Nothing good is going to be discussed. <laughs> what do you make of players only meetings with the Jets? Is that is Sala in trouble here? Oh, that means nothing is going right. Uh, they, they, there's something really, really big behind the scenes that they feel that they have to have conversations away from coaches. Uh, but the coaches already know. It, it, players only meetings. We had a couple of them, and and nothing really gets done. It's it's basically the airing of the grievances. Yeah. Um, and then you just kind of move on. I really don't know uh, if I've ever heard anybody come up and say, oh, no, no, that's not true. We had a players only meeting one time and we really got down to some of the core issues. And, you know, after that players only meeting, we really turned everything around. So I think it's always a sign of a team in trouble. And then there's really not anything that that's earth shattering coming out of it. So you're kind of in that same that same position, but now everybody knows you're in trouble because you call the players only meeting. Yeah. Finally, Moose, uh, Daryl Moose Johnson, Fox Sports, uh, three rings. It's supposed to be a great college quarterback draft class. Well, we know this last one wasn't supposed to be any good, and Anthony Richardson's dynamic, C.J. Stroud's amazing, Will Levis has something, so you don't really know. Um, But we talked about Arizona. A team, you know, they beat Dallas. I said, the 10 teams right now that would have the first 10 picks, I said, I could see all of them taking a quarterback. But I push back on Kyler Murray. If Arizona had like the first or second, I could trade that and get a boatload of picks. And I said, this guy went to a, what's perceived as a poorly owned, poorly coached team in a division with McVay, Pete Carroll, and Shanahan and made the playoffs. He, he was an overcomer. I mean, Dak came into the league. He had Zeke, a great old line. Cowboys generally draft pretty well. There was nothing going right in Arizona, and he pulled them to the playoffs. I'm a Kyler Murray fan. People push back on his personality in the video games. And here's what I say, Moose, and tell me if I'm wrong. Modern players are different. They do play video games. They, they, it's a different world. They, I mean, this kid was a baseball star, a football star. I'm a Kyler Murray believer. I feel like I'm on an island. If they got a first or a second pick in what is perceived as a great college class, Moose, would you take a quarterback or stick with Kyler? Well, I, I think the, the previous regime has already kind of forced you into position there with, with the contract that's that's on Kyler right now. So how how is that? going to impact your cap if you got to step away from it what is the trade value there of somebody picking that up um i i don't think it's just the video game because you make a great point it, it today's modern college athlete professional athlete are are gamers yeah and you know they that it's part of their culture but when that gets in the way of your preparation when all of a sudden there's a clause in a contract that's requiring you to work a little bit harder there's something more there than just playing video games. So that would be something that I would be concerned about that you'd have to get a good feel on. Um, I, I, I agree with you, you know, Arizona in that division, um, you know, what he did when he was healthy uh, is, is pretty amazing, but, but that's the other component for me. And, and I think it's got a lot to do with Lamar. Um, You know, the dual threat quarterback in the NFL usually is not as as fit as he was at the end of the season from a health standpoint, yeah. just because these teams lean on them so much yeah. in the pass game, in the run game, um, you know, they're, they're not playing their best football or they're not capable of playing their best football when you get to December and January. And that's what you have to have from not only your team, but especially your quarterback. So I think that, that that's a, that's a big part of it as well. And we haven't, we've seen Tyler or Kyler start uh, the season very, very well, uh, but we're still waiting for that finish. Um, so I think that there's a number of things out there that, that would make this intriguing. 
Uh, and then you've got a new staff. You're going to have a, a, a coaching staff and an offensive side of the ball that wants to put their spin on what they want to do. Does Kyler fit into that? Are they going to move towards him? And the skill set that he brings to that position, you know, that, that'll be something that we'll have to wait and see. But I, I think the other element that's there now is when you hear somebody like Caleb Williams say, if, if I don't get drafted to the right team, I'll just stay in school another year and make a lot of NIL money. Um, you're not going to make as much as you would in the NFL, but you're going to make a lot of money at the collegiate level with these NILs now. So there's a different dynamic there where when we saw, uh, you know, the, the quarterbacks in the past, uh, you know, the, the, the Peyton Mannings of the world and, and things like that, where I'm not coming to that team, don't draft me, um, you know, things like that. And, and now you've got a little bit of ammunition yeah. with, with that stance. You know, you can actually, you know, you've got something to fall back onto. So I think there's a ton of things going on in that decision. And, and it's actually going to be one of the more intriguing ones in the off season. Yeah. Uh, Fox sports. Glad to have him. He's got the Niners back to back weeks. That's a good team to have back to back weeks. That is a, you got hall of famers in every unit. It is remarkable how valuable Debo is to that team. As you well saw, so they're healthy. They've got the, I feel a little bit bad for the Bucks. That's a 3,000 mile flight. I wish them the very best at the <laughs> Niners. <laughs> it's a rough sled. Uh, Moose is always, it's great seeing you. Great to visit with you, Colin. Take care. Yeah. How about that? Getting a plane fly 3,000 miles and have to face the most talented team in the NFL in several years. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.